So, let us prove uh, an important result in linear algebra which is the unique representation theorem. So, I will state the theorem. Let S be a vector space and T B a subset of this vector space and non empty. This set T is linearly independent if and only if I mean there is a forward statement as well as a reverse statement if and only if for each non zero x belonging to the span of this space uh, T there is exactly one finite subset of T denoted by P 1 this collection of vectors P 1, P 2 so on till P suffix n and a unique set of scalars C 1, C 2, so on till C n such that x can be written as uh, a linear combination of all these uh, vectors P 1 to P n through the scalars uh, C 1 through C n. So, before we begin we have to understand what we need to prove. So, there is a forward statement which says linear independence should imply unique representation and then there is a reverse statement which says if it is unique representation then it is linearly independent and that is this if and only if statement. So, let us try to prove both these parts. So, to prove this part we shall establish this by contradiction let T be a linearly independent set. Let us assume that there exists x is a non zero vector belonging to the span of T whose representation is not unique and this is where we have to establish this result. Thus there exists two subsets of T namely a set P which is comprising of vectors P 1, P 2 so on till P suffix m 
the p i s span t q having q 1 q 2 so on q suffix n the q i s span t see the difference between m and n here such that x can be written in two forms one using the set p and other using set q. So, x is basically a linear combination of vectors from the set p and uh, we said that this representation is not unique. So, therefore, you are using another combination using uh, vectors q i and associated uh, scalars d sub i, where um, I think I have to make a point here c i s and d i s are non zero. Now, let us rearrange the terms in um, the representation of x that is whatever we have written down here. So, let us rearrange the terms in the representation for x. So, what we get is sigma i equals 1 to m c sub i p i minus summation i going from 1 to n d sub fix i q sub fix i this is basically the 0 vector. Now, as p i s and q i s belong to t right. If p intersection q is a null set then p i s and q i s are different. So, this contradicts the fact that t is a linearly independent set as their non trivial linear combination cannot sum to 0. Hence, there must be some overlap between the two sets right. As q i s and p i s belong to t if the intersection of p and q is a null set then p i s and q i s are different this contradicts the fact that t is a linearly independent set as their non trivial combination uh, cannot sum to 0. So, therefore, there must be some overlap between these sets. So, let us proceed further. let m be less than n right because um, there must there is, there is some overlap and let, let, let m be less than n without loss of generality 
Now, I call this equation uh, before um, equation 2 and uh, <coughs> possibly the, the first equation that we have in the theorem we can uh, we can just call this equation 1. Okay. So, equation 2 holds only if for every piece of xi there exists some q suffix j such that p suffix i equals q suffix j and c i minus d j vanishes. This is true as only trivial linear combination of vectors in T can be 0. Okay. Now, renumbering the elements in Q, we obtain say P suffix i is Q suffix i, we can just label this and then C i is a scalar C i equals D i thus the set P is part of the set Q. Let us just call this uh, this equality here as equation 3. So, from 2 and 3 we land up with summation i going from m plus 1 to n d i q suffix i is basically this 0 vector. Okay. So, let us call this equation number 4. So, as if q i's are non 0. they should be linearly independent and d i are non zero. So, therefore, the only possible solution is q i being this 0 vector. So, therefore, if we neglect the 0 vector, we define the set q is basically q 1 so on till q m. which is basically this set p which we uh, arrived at because p i equals q i for i equals 1 to m and therefore, uh, the representation is unique. So, let us get to the other part which is if we have a unique 
representation does it imply linear independence. So, again we shall establish this through contradiction. Let every vector x belonging to span of this set T have a unique representation in terms of vectors in the set T comprising of say T 1 to some T k. Let us assume that T is a linearly dependent set, then there exists a 1, a 2, so on till a k, where at least 1 a i is non zero such that this linear combination is a zero vector. Let a 1 be non zero consider I will call this equation 5 <coughs> consider x which is equal to t 1 say suppose and and this is given by minus 1 upon a 1 summation i equals 2 to k a i t i. Now, as x <coughs> does not have a unique representation this implies a contradiction because we assume that it has a unique representation. So, therefore, T is a linearly independent set and this completes the proof of this theorem. We will stop here.